So this word problem is a little more straightforward than the other one. I wanted to do the harder one uh, with y'all. Um, but anyway, so we're looking at this equation about Danielle staying different nights in three different cities. And remember what they're, what they're looking for is always going to be the variables. So they say determine the number of nights. Ugh, could have done that better. So if you want to find the number of nights, that's the unknown. So I'm going to let x equal the nights in DC. Y is going to be the nights in Atlanta. And Z is going to be the nights in Dallas. All right, so we know that there is an equation for the total number of nights. And that one's easy. It's just my variables. My variables have to add up to 14. OK, and then the second equation is going to be the cost. Notice that if you read the question, or not read the question, but all the costs are listed here, the total is right there. So the total cost. Okay, so if you're doing this problem, that's going to be 200x. So plus 100y plus 150z is equal to 2200. And then we have the special restriction. That is twice as many nights in Dallas as she did in Washington. Yeah. Twice as many Dallas than Washington. Okay. So Dallas is the bigger one. So that means that Dallas has to equal 2 times DC. If I put that in an equation, Dallas is Z. 2 times DC is X. So Z is equal to 2X. So that's my linear system. Hopefully you all got that. And on this exam, that's what I'm testing. So on the lab, you're going to have to do the whole Gauss-Jordan thing. But on the um, exam, all I care about is your ability to read the problem and to set it up properly. Okay, and then the last equation is z equals 2x. So my unsolved augmented matrix, 1, 1, 1, 14, 200, 100, 150, 2200. And then here, if I get this 2x, and if I bring it to the other side, it'll become a negative 2x. So negative 2, 0, 1, 0. So that's my unsolved matrix. And again, um, on the exam, all I care about is that's really, oh, there it is. This is all I care about, the unsolved matrix. So if we go through, I can do second matrix, edit. Let's type this in. 1, 1, 1, 14, 200. 100, 150, 2,200, negative 2, 0, 1, 0. OK, go through to make sure everything looks good. Nothing's worse than having a typo when you're doing this. Right, and second matrix, I go to the math menu. 
go down to RF. matrix A, and we can see that my answer is going to be 42A. So I know that at the very end, when I do all these steps, nine steps, I know that my final matrix is going to be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 4, 2, 8. That means that she spent Ah, let me get closer to my screen so I can write better. She spent four nights in DC two nights in Atlanta and eight nights in Dallas. And so if you got that Without the help of um, the internet or asking people or watching the video, then you're pretty much set for the test on that question. I'm going to put a question very similar to that on the exam. All right. Now, just for the sake of doing all the nine steps, since your lab has you do that, I'm going to go ahead and go through all nine steps. But if you already know how to do that, you can just turn off the video. But let's go through and get the answer the long way. Let me turn off this guy. All right. So the first step here, notice that we already have a 1 in the upper left corner. The next step is to turn that 200 into a 0. I do that by doing the opposite. So negative 200 row 1 plus row 2 should give me my new row 2. So that's going to be negative 200 negative 200, negative 200, and then 14 times negative 200 is negative 2800. And then I have underneath 200, 100, 150, 2200. I can add those up, and that gives me 0, negative 100, negative 50, and 2,800 minus, my brain is just completely turned off right now, is uh, negative 600. And so that's my new matrix. So I have 1, 1, 1, 14, 0, negative 100, negative 50, negative 600, negative two, zero, one, zero. Now, remember we're going through column one first. And so I can get the negative two out of the way. Column one, so I use row one. So two, row one, plus row three. It gives me my new row three. So two, row one is two, 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 28, negative 2, 0, 1, 0. I can add those up. 0, 2, 3, 28. And that becomes my new matrix. Right. So now we're going to go through and we're going to look at column two. Always start with the diagonal element first. Oh, I did that ugly. So always take care of the diagonal element first. And then from there, you can take care of the other two, whether it be this one or this one. So the diagonal element, I want to make a one. And so you just multiply by the reciprocal. Negative one over 100. Row 2 becomes my new row 2. And I can just do that mentally. I have 1, 1, 1, 14. 
So if I divide by negative 100, I have 0, 1, and then negative 50 over 100 is 1 half, and then 600 over 100 is 6, and then 0, 2, 3, 28. All right, and then it's up to you. If you want, you can get rid of this one. If you want, you can get rid of that one. Okay. Usually we do the bottom one first because if there was no solution or infinite solutions, that would tell you immediately. If you do the top one first, you'll get an answer. And then when you do the X one, then you'll figure out that there's an infinite or no solution. And that's kind of lame because you did one extra step. So that's why really they make you do that one first. You don't have to. So I'm in column two now. So I'm going to use row two to get rid of it. Negative two row two plus row three is my new row three. Negative two times row two is zero. Negative two, negative one, negative 12, zero, two, three, 28. I can add those up. 0, 0, 2, and then 28 minus 12 is 16. All right, now, if you want, I know a lot of people like to get rid of this one. So let's go ahead and get rid of that one. There's no, like, you must do it this way whenever you're solving and doing your Cross Jordan. Um, but anyway, so that's column two. So I'm going to use row two. And notice that they're just the same number, so I'm just going to do negative row one. Sorry, negative row 2 plus row 1 is going to give me my new row 1. Okay, so I have negative row 2 is 0, negative 1, negative 1 half, negative 6. Row 1 is 1, 1, 1, 14. Add them up. So this gives me 1, 0, 1 half, 14 minus 6 is 8. So I have 1, 1, 1, 14, 1, 0, ah, what did I do that for? I'm sorry. This is row 1. So 1, 0, 1 half, 8, 1, uh, 0, 1, 1 half, 6, 0, 0, 2, 16. Okay, now I can work on column 3. These are the last three steps. You deal with the diagonal element first. So I want to turn that into a 1. So 1 half row 3 becomes my new row 3. I can do that mentally. There we go. Now, the last two steps, I want to get rid of this number. I'm in column three. So I'm going to use row three to change it. So it's negative one half. Row three plus row two becomes my new row two. Negative one half row three is so 0, 0, negative 1 half, negative 4, and then 0, 0, positive 1 half, 6. I add those up. 0, 0, oh. So 
Sorry. That's a one. Okay. Yeah. So this first row is just negative one half row three. Okay. The next row that I wrote here is just row two. I just verbatim copied it and I forgot to put the one there. So when I add these up, I get zero. Negative four plus six is two. And there's that answer. So I have one, zero, one half, eight, zero, one, zero, two, zero, zero, one, eight. Then I go to step eight. And step eight is to get rid of this number. Again, we're in column three, so I'm gonna use row three. Negative one half row three plus row one gives me my new row one. So it's the same row three as before. I'll label it this time so I don't be silly. Negative one half row three is zero, zero, negative one half, negative four. And then row one is one, zero, one half, eight. Okay, we add those up. And that gives me one, zero, zero, four. So I have one, zero, zero, four, zero, one, zero, two, zero, zero, one, eight. And there you go. Notice it matches what the RF gave me. Remember, I got that with my calculator. Okay, so this whole nine step process, in this case it was eight because one step we didn't have to do, but this whole process is what you're gonna have to do for the lab that you're gonna turn in in about a week, okay? Now on the exam though, since we already tested over this, I'm gonna be, it's gonna be perfectly fine for you to use your calculator and go straight to the answer. On the next exam, I'm more focused in your ability to read a word problem and to set it up properly. All right. That's it. Um, hopefully you got it right. If you have any questions, just let me know.